My eyes are always on the Lord, for He rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. Good morning and welcome to Holy Family as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant this morning is Father Matthew, and our gathering song is number 484, Hosea. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees to bend, though straight and tall, so must we to others call. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. The wilderness will lead you to your heart where I will speak. Integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and to living deeply our new life. You shall sleep secure with peace. Faithfulness will be your joy. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. 
You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day <clears throat> is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter, or the male or female slave, or the beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. <coughs> Honor your father and mother, that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor, neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Our response oral psalm is number 1023. to be desired than gold. The 
seven quantities of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey flowing from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than any human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than any human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal, for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the words Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Our modern society is filled with many no's, 
no signs, no sayings, no trespassing, no fishing, no hunting, no dumping, no smoking. Don't walk on the grass. Don't cycle here. Don't cry. Don't wake the baby. Don't cross the road. Don't talk. Don't be late or don't be long. And one of my favorite, don't be stupid. These sayings are not bad things. But they point us to something correct. They prevent us from doing something bad. When Moses came down from the smoke-wrapped mountain of Mount Sinai, he brought it in two stone tablets, with which were carved the Ten Commandments. And eight of them are do not sayings. Thou shall not. And since then, the Ten Commandments have made up almost every single legal system in the civilized world. The do nots of the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, have evolved into a charter of human rights. And so when Jesus walks into the temple, he drove out the money makers out of the temple, and he as God said, Don't turn my father's house into a den of thieves. Don't turn my father's house into a marketplace. Again, the do nots are not a bad thing. The law, the law of God, is not bad. For it shows us God. It shows us how to be good and perfect like God. To show this, I want to give a simple example. Imagine you, I'm sure you've all never done this, uh, you don't want to cook, and you decide to order a pizza. So I'm sure none of you have ever done that. And you order this meat lover's pizza, and definitely not a meat lover pizza on Friday during Lent. You would never do that, though. The doorbell rings, and you open the box, you look at the pizza, it's completely burnt. Hmm, that would not be a good thing. That would make me very angry. And I'd probably have the righteous anger and throw the pizza across the room. No. But the, a burnt pizza is not the way a pizza is supposed to be. The pizza, when it is burnt, is not perfect. Another example, you get the new iPhone 6000 Max. I don't know what they're on anymore. I gave up. And they have, it has 15 cameras, but you open up, you plug it in, and guess what? It doesn't work. It doesn't take any calls, no quality picture. Again, the phone is not good. It's not the way it's supposed to be. It's, it's not perfect. So we, we as human beings, are made in the image and likeness of God. We are called and supposed to be like God. That's our calling. That's where we're meant to be. So, because God is good and perfect, and if we are like God, we're called to be good and perfect. So the law points us, it teaches us to, be, to do God's will, to, to be like God. So it helps us to know the good. It helps to, us, to instruct us on how to do it. So going back to that pizza, there's a good thing that Domino's, they have very specific procedures, very specific laws on how to cook a pizza. It's never happened to me where I've gotten a burnt pizza. That's really good. At home, I might burn the pizza because I don't follow the rules or directions listed on the box. Maybe you forget to set the timer or whatever. But at Domino's, there's very specific rules on how to make your pizza perfect. And so another example, let's say, I'm sure, again, this has never happened to you. You're, when you were a child, your mother said, don't touch the pot, the burn at the boiling pot. And you're like, oh, well, I'm going to touch the pot now. And so you go and you touch the pot, and guess what? You burned your hand. Like your mother's instruction, God's law is there to protect us from hurting ourselves. We are our own worst enemy. So in this way, it teaches us to avoid sin, 
and it teaches us how to become like God, how to become perfect the way we're supposed to be. So in this way, like I said, the do nots are not a bad thing. They teach us to become perfect like God, who we are made to be. The temple in Jerusalem was the center of Jewish worship and the only center for Israel's common worship and sacrifice. Weekly Sabbaths, which were on Sunday or Saturdays, they were the place where the teaching of the law occurred. So they were learning about the law in these, in these, uh, in these synagogues, these local synagogues in their own home. But a couple times a year, they'd make pilgrimage up to Jerusalem to the temple and offer sacrifice. And throughout its year, the temple was desecrated, destroyed, and rebuilt. But when Jesus saw the place of God, the house of God, and he saw it in disarray, it was, he realized what was wrong. People were bringing in false things, false gods, and they were breaking the first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So they were breaking that one main rule. They were also kind of stealing from each other by, by not being fair. But they were breaking the Ten Commandments. They, were bra- they weren't recognizing that this place of worship, this place of God, was a place to become more like God. And so the temple is a house of prayer for all worshipers of the one true God. But they were bringing in other specific other places. So Jesus recognized and said, get that out of here. Get out of this, of this place of worship, this place of sacrifice. And so he was instructing them through one of those do nots, through those get out of this place, because he was casting it out. Because this, this sinful action separates us from God. So in a similar way, the new temple is the mystical body of Christ, called the church, where the eternal sacrifice of the Lamb of God is offered on living stones, on the altars of our heart. And as members and participants of this new temple, do we com- offer complete spiritual worship to God alone? Or do we bring in other idols, other things to worship into our own temple? For these sinful activities, Jesus is driving away from his temple. And we do not want to be driven out of the temple. We want to remain in the temple. So I know that we are trying. I know that it's, well, we just finished the month of February, which is not a month, it's a disease. But we are moving forward much quickly into our Easter, Easter season. And we're trying to remain free from sin and all those other idols. And I know it's difficult. But in this way, God gave us the law. He gave us the law so that we can learn to follow him, to become good and perfect in his sight. So today, say yes to doing the good. Say yes to to becoming who you were meant to be, who you were supposed to be, and become like God, perfect. For Jesus told us, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, me God's and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, shine from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and then rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. It is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. As we journey through this Lenten season, let us bring before Christ all of our needs. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, God of mercy, hear our prayer, hear our prayer. For church leaders, that they may always serve God and his church faithfully. For world leaders, that they may promote and defend the life and dignity of all people. For our parish community, that through Eucharistic adoration we may find deeper communion with God. For all catechumens and elect, that in these final weeks of preparation their hearts and minds may be illumined with the strength and power of God. For all who have died this week, Wayne Risto and Raul Roca, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, Jack and Dolores Kakruski. Larry Merton, Anniversary, Robert and Eileen Hoy, Norma and Ben Zemer, the George and Helen Costello family, Robert Hughes, and Shirley Carl. And for all of our own first petitions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, God of mercy, hear our prayer. Son of God, help us discover your presence in all of our lives, and to entrust more of ourselves completely to you, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts is number 728, I Has Not Seen. I has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of God. When pain and sorrow weigh us down, be near to us, O oh Lord. Forgive the weakness of our faith and bear us up within your peaceful word. I has not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of God. Our lives are but a single breath. 
we flower and we fade yet all our days are in your hands so we return in love what love has made I has not seen ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love him spirit of love Come give us the mind of Jesus, teach us the wisdom of God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, the Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without a hand we acclaim. Song to us, song to us, song to us, Dominus Deus Abod, Lenis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria to Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those in memory, venerate especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tuam Annunciamus Domine Et Tuam Resurrectionem Confitemur Donec Venias Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once we are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, in the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us to the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all is in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The sparrow finds a home And the swallow a nest for her young By your Christ. altars, O Lord of hosts My King Christ, and my Christ. God Blessed are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. The body of Christ. Our communion song is number 946. Let us be bread. Let us be 
wine love freely poured let us be one in the, the Lord. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things that hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth from the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about us in us in commissary may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just stand right here for a second, okay? We have a few announcements. All men are invited to join us at the Men of Christ Hybrid Conference, Mastering What Matters, this Saturday, March 9th at a Holy Family. So right here. The morning will feature opportunities for fellowship, mass, and hear from fellow well-known speakers like Kevin O'Brien and Father John Lococo. I think maybe I guess we didn't get enough of him at our parish mission, so we're going to have more of him, but that's okay. We still love him. So sign-in will begin at 6.30 a.m., followed by the rosary, mass, and adoration at 7 a.m. No one will be turned away, uh, so, but please register. Please visit menofchrist.net. Our Lenten Priest Talk series continues, A Call to Eureka Shrek Revival, uh, this Tuesday at Sacred Heart Church from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Father Michael will discuss Chapter 2 of This Is My Body, by the book by Bishop Robert Barron, and you do not have to have read the book to learn from this series. And I know this is a little ironic, but we're selling soup uh, today because we, we, we had the cleansing the temple for selling stuff in the marketplace, in the temple. But we're selling stuff today. And, but this soup is perfect. And you see, you won't have to go to a restaurant later to get, to get your dinner or lunch. You can, so available after Mass, uh, it's three for $15 or six each. And all proceeds are going to the Holy, Fam- Holy Land Food Pantry and the Holy Family Warming Shelter. So please, and thank you for your generosity. The Lord be with you. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Our closing song is number 881, Lift High the Cross. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our Savior trod, our King victorious, Christ the Son of God. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Led on their way by this triumphant sign, the horse of God in conquering ranks combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name.